Good morning and welcome to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host Andrea Williams. Our focus this morning is on museums that are located right here in the city. Museums of course have the power to create unity on both the social and political level and local museums are able to provide a sense of community and their purposes are multifaceted. My first guest represents America's Black Holocaust Museum located in Milwaukee's historic Bronzeville. Its mission is to build public awareness of the harmful legacies of slavery and Jim Crow in America, and it promotes racial repair, reconciliation, and healing. I'm happy to have Dr. Robert Davis, who serves as the president and CEO of America's Black Holocaust Museum, join us today. How are you, Dr. Davis? I am wonderful. Once again, it's great to be a part of your show and thank you for for hosting me and hopefully other museum leaders uh, in Milwaukee. We are very blessed to have a robust museum presence here, not only in Milwaukee, but in the state of Wisconsin. Yes, I agree with you totally. And America's Black Holocaust Museum and its late founder, Dr. James Cameron, uh, it holds a special place in many people's hearts right here uh, in the city as well as globally. So if you would, for those who are not familiar, uh, talk a little bit more about America's Black Holocaust Museum and uh, the journey that uh, has led you to where you are today. Well, thanks once again for the opportunity. We are distinguished here at America's Black Holocaust Museum to be one of the only museums in the country to be founded by Dr. James Cameron. The significance of Dr. Cameron and his legacy is that he's one of the only known people in the history of this country to have survived a public lynching at the age of 16 in uh, night, it, excuse me, back in Marion, Indiana, when he was 16 years old. Mm -hmm. And of course, that in of itself, I mean, literally having two people being hung before you noose around your neck, they're, they're walking up to the tree at 16, and someone in the audience said, that's little Jimmy Cameron, he couldn't have done what you all say he did, and literally he was released. And of course, you know, that changed his life, and so he moved around and create and became a self-taught uh, historian, landed here in Milwaukee, and founded America's Black Holocaust Museum in 1988. So the journey has been and you, you described our mission most appropriately, is to continue that mission, mission of creating awareness around the disparities that have been caused by colonialism, slavery, and Jim Crow that we are witnessing, we're bearing witness to right now in 2021 and beyond. Our journey has been fascinating because now, as you know, the museum after Dr. Cameron died in 2006, closed in 2008, and there has always been a groundswell of interest in bringing it back. I was fortunate and blessed and honored to be asked to come back from uh, where I was in Iowa, because I was here, as you know, before at the, the Zoological Society here at the zoo, mm -hmm. and to continue his legacy and reopen the museum and reemerge and reimagine. So the journey is right now we are, we plan to open during the DNC, which everyone in Milwaukee was in the state was extraordinarily excited about. Of course, right. because of COVID, that didn't happen. Unfortunately, we lost all of our major vendors. So we still have some exhibits to uh, construct and actually install and uh, some AV work to do, but we're almost there. And so what we decided to do was, which everybody else is doing in our world, is we are now creating a lot of virtual experiences so we've been heavy on the virtual programming, which has been extraordinarily successful because now we are bringing people and experts from around the country into the museum virtually. And we've also been able to fund a lot of this virtual programming because donors understand that you can't have in-house programming now. And so they are funding these virtual programs. But the other very interesting thing about this, and this also speaks to the strength and the breadth and depth of museums is now because of this virtual programming, people from all over the country, people from other countries, if advertised correctly, can tune into your program. 
Yeah, it's it's really exciting to get to the point where people can actually walk through the doors uh, at the new location and really take in all that America's Black Holocaust Museum represents. And Dr. Cameron, who I had an opportunity to interview on many occasions, he had said that uh, he put together the concept of this museum in hopes that uh, people who were not of African-American descent uh, could really see the experiences of black people and have a better understanding and maybe that would help move our country forward and people just having uh, just a little more uh, feeling our compassion about what a race of people has gone through. In your opinion, do you feel like our society is evolving, uh, especially after the last, I'd say two to five years? So I would say most critically in the last 18 months, we have evolved and it's because of a few very tragic things as it relates to COVID and how the overwhelming disparities as it relates to healthcare, where, mm -hmm. where it comes to brown and black people and across the country. So that was the first thing. And then unfortunately, because of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd, then that was when everything changed as, as it relates to almost every aspect of American life. And because of George Floyd, it was an international ripple effect of people becoming aware of what, you know, quite frankly, and I can, if I'll, if you allow, I'll be a lot, a little colloquial and say, black folks knew this. We have suffered this for four centuries, for four centuries, right? And so, but now it was on international television and it created this awareness and it is creating this subsequent, as the words that you use, evolution. One of the things that we found through our virtual programming was, um, I'd probably say more than 60% of our participants were white. And that was because they wanted to be able to have this awareness of what was going on. On a personal note, I've had friends from around the country, colleagues from around the country, my neighbors literally coming to me in tears saying, I didn't know, and how can I help? What do I do? What can I do? And so one of the major purposes of the museum as part of Dr. Cameron's legacy was our vision, which is to be a convener of these very difficult conversations in a very safe, meaningful and respectful manner so that people can come, come to them virtually and, and, and soon physically and express themselves in a way which is respectful, but it's also honest and there is, a, there is a lack of awareness, but until people are educated about all aspects of our culture, our different cultures, the differences of our cultures, the similarities of our culture, then that full evolutionary process is going to kick in. Right now, I'd say we're, 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 in, the, we're in the beginning, we're in the, 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 the um, almost the toddler stage of this evolution, but it is, it is happening and it's happening in various degrees as it relates to su supporting museums and not-for-profits, there's been an overwhelming response from corporate America. As you mm -hmm. can see across the country, people have really been investing in, in museums and in not-for-profits. So things are getting better. But the one thing that I will say is things are getting better, but systems are changing and they aren't getting better. And mm -hmm. so as it relates to voting rights, as it relates to the disparities in housing, education, educational content, those things actually aren't getting better because of politics primarily. So on the one hand, things are definitely getting better. And I know you have a lot of questions, so I, I'll end with things are getting better, but they have not reached the full potential of creating this, this momentum that will continue the evolution. Yes, and I think that uh, education is the key. And it was the late, great Nelson Mandela who said education is the most powerful weapon 
in which to change the world. And with that said, uh, America's Black Holocaust Museum has a partnership with the Milwaukee Public Museum uh, for the debut of the Nelson Mandela exhibit. And this is a huge deal. So if you could tell us a little bit more about that and how long people have a chance to experience that exhibit. Thank you for that. And I'll start by saying, when we were, when I was approached by Dr. Ellen Sitsky, their CEO, she started talking and she was like, Bert, remember we met here and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, sure. And so she started talking about, we're, 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 we're in the throes of trying to bring this really important exhibit here. I think it's gonna be important for Milwaukee to hear. And so she was talking and then I said, wait a minute, did you just say Mandela? She said, <laughs> yeah. I said, well, you can just stop right there. Hold it right there. You had me at Mandela. Whatever <laughs> All right. you can do, to help you bring Nelson Mandela, anything about Nelson Mandela, who's one of my international heroes of all time, to Milwaukee we're in. So let me say, number one, the Public Museum was very forthright and very honest, and I have the utmost respect for them because mm -hmm. museums can be a bit arrogant. She had the fortitude to come to me and say, Dr. Burt, we're pretty much a white institution. This is an extraordinarily important uh, exhibit, primarily for all people, but especially people of color because it's Nelson Mandela. Right. Because of all of the horrendous stigmas that Milwaukee has at this time, she was smart enough, wise enough, and honest enough to say, we need your help. So what our role was, was to help create a nearly 50 person advisory group that helped to shape some of the programming, the outreach, the community development of the exhibit, which came from uh, South Africa. It's the only internationally family sanctioned exhibit. It's traveled the world. It's gonna be here until August 1st, and then it's going to Portland, Oregon. So the importance of the, the advisory committee is to help create this programming that even though the exhibit leaves on August 1st, his legacy will continue and programming around this extraordinary man will continue hopefully through infinity. Yeah, and when you uh, speak of, you know, Nelson Mandela, there's so much there. This exhibit will allow visitors to go back in time to his rural childhood home that helped shape him to be the great leader that he was and relive the global celebration of his release after those 27 years that he spent in prison and his historic ascent as South Africa's first democratically elected president. So uh, here's what I remember being in high school and the whole uh, thing about apartheid, uh, wearing the necklaces that made it clear that we were against apartheid. And then I remember being a senior in college when he was released from prison and I kept my Ebony magazine that had him on the cover upon that release. So we'll show a picture of that because I still have it today. But wonderful. I wanted to know, in your opinion, uh, if you had to choose maybe two to three words to describe uh, this exhibit after you've had a chance to see it and experience it, what would those words be? Impactful, exhilarating, and thought. Uh, thought and mind and spirit provoking. So I think that wow. might be five. Wow. Um, because I will say, I will tell you the three words that people utter as, as a matter of fact, I led a tour this morning there, gonna need another tour there this evening. The three words that almost invariably everybody says as they leave is, I did not, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the profoundness of this man. Mm -hmm. And, you know, consequently, there's a lot of correlation between Nelson Mandela and his work and his struggles and Dr. James Cameron's work and his struggle. And you can see the corollary in so, throughout both of their books and their, and their life's work. I will say that if I, if I may, I actually have a favorite Nelson Mandela story because when he was released, the first place that he lived, that he visited in the United States was Atlanta, Georgia. And at the time I was, I had finished veterinary school at Tuskegee, 
which is about two hours from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And me and a group of my friends, we drove to Atlanta to Georgia Tech's football stadium to see Nelson Mandela. It was the most unbelievable experience I've ever had in my life. The entire stadium was like electrified. And I remember vividly looking around me and everybody that was in our section and everyone was crying. Yeah, because of the it's power of this man. It absolutely. Was, I'll, I'll never, ever, ever forget. It's probably one of the most important events of my entire life. Yeah, and former Alderman Joe Davis Sr., who served as uh, the South African Honorary Consul for Wisconsin, he invited me to be the host for Milwaukee's celebration of life and work of Mandela back in 2013. So uh, that too gave me an opportunity to dig deeper and understand the man and the movement even more. So uh, we are quickly running out of time. I wanted to make sure everyone understood that July 18th will mark what would have been Nelson Mandela's 103rd birthday. So it's considered International Nelson Mandela Day. And the Milwaukee Public Museum is hosting a free family friendly event that includes admission to the museum and uh, that special exhibit, Nelson Mandela, the official exhibition. So I thank you for joining us today and really just giving everyone an idea of all the great things happening with America's Black Holocaust Museum. Thank you so much for hosting and remember to tell the people if they go or if they don't go that there is a 67 challenge that we'd like for everyone to take. That's an honor of the 67 years of Nelson Mandela's life that he dedicated to service for all. And so whether you go or you go to the Public Museum's website, my challenge is that you take the 67 challenge and you can use that 67 for minutes of dedication to volunteerism. You can make a donation to your favorite museum of $67, however you'd like to do it. Once again, Andrea, it is a pleasure to be on your show and thank you for the great work that you've done for the Milwaukee and greater community for all of these years. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. Dr. Robert Davis is the president and CEO of America's Black Holocaust Museum located at 401 West North Avenue. You can find out more about the museum and its history by visiting abhmuseum.org. And don't forget to celebrate International Nelson Mandela Day on July 18th with outdoor friendly activities beginning at 2 p.m. and free admission to the special exhibit, Nelson Mandela, the official exhibition going on now through August 1st. For more information on that, visit mpm.edu. When we return to Our Issues Milwaukee, we'll turn our attention to another local museum that's mission is to inspire all children to wonder and explore their world through play and innovative hands-on learning experiences. We'll do that right after this.